Shalom to all of my friends uh, in Mashiach, uh, Yeshua. I'm uh, going to be doing a very short uh, introduction. Uh, well, it's kind of a summary, I guess, more than an introduction of the gifts of the Spirit this morning. Um, and it's for any of you who uh, would like to, who don't have this teaching in your own local fellowship and would like to understand these things, specifically for a friend of mine, a brother in uh, Mashiach and a preacher in uh, Pakistan, Greetings, Sohail, Shalom to you and uh, Sohail, excuse me, to, um, to you and to your group there in Pakistan. This study, uh, I'm really not sure how long it's going to be, but I'll be reading from, from uh, um, uh, Sacred Names New Covenant 2nd Edition that uh, I have uh, published. Um, in, uh, in a, it's a compilation of a variety of uh, Renewed Covenant translations, some English and some out of the Hebrew and some out of the Aramaic, so I've I've uh, been as faithful to the original manuscripts as possible and used a lot of my own notes. But I'd like for us to, to look at the, the concept or the biblical teaching on gifts of Ruach, HaKodesh, or the Holy Spirit. First of all, I'll just briefly summarize that the moment every believer uh, is sanctified in Mashiach, the moment that his, his dead spirit is regenerated and, and comes alive, he receives from Mashiach, from Yahweh, the creator of the universe, a special gift or several special gifts. They are supernaturally imparted to him. It's very possible that it was already uh, something that he, was, he enjoyed doing previously, he or she, but once the Holy Spirit regenerates his dead spirit, the ability to do that, whichever talent that he had, if, if it were his natural talents before he got saved, uh, is greatly enhanced. And the important thing to remember is that uh, Yahweh's people are tremendously blessed when each one of us manifests our gifts within the body of Christ. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is take you to 1 Peter, because uh, in Peter we discover that every single individual, the minute they get saved, receives a special gift from the Creator of the universe, and Peter makes a comment in it about it in 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. i got to find it myself. I don't use this Bible very much. I've just, just gotten it printed, so it's brand new. Let me see if I can find it here. It says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, and you can find them in your, your Bibles, in, in your translations, as each one has received some spiritual gift, he should use it in serve, to, service, to serve others, like good managers of Elohim's many-sided grace. Hold on just one minute. I have some entertaining birds over here that think they don't have to raise their hand before they speak. So if I cover them up, usually they get quiet. And we don't need this kind of disruption this morning. So I'm going to cover them up. And hopefully that will quiet them down. Okay, so what Peter presumes is that each one has received a special gift whenever he gets saved. And so the important thing is, is that we're commanded, it's not optional, every single member of the true body of Mashiach is supposed to be, we are commanded to be administering our gifts to one another. We're going to be looking at a list of those gifts in just a moment. But I also want to look at one thing, one more thing in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And again, it's taking me a little longer than normal to find these things in this new book because it hasn't been used at all. So, it's not automatic. <laughs> it's not an automatic pilot. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. And it reads, Therefore, if anyone is united with Mashiach, he is a new creation. The old has passed. Look, what has become, or what has come, is fresh and new. So the point here that Paul is making is that when we get saved, we're no longer the old creature that we were. We're new creatures. And this is part of that regeneration that the Holy Spirit uh, empowers us to administer the gift that He gives to us at that time. Gift or gifts. Some people have more than one but administer that gift or gifts to the rest of the body of Mashiach so that everyone is actively involved in ministry and therefore the body is blessed and will grow accordingly. Okay? 
So with that in mind, if you want to take a couple of moments and shut the video off and discuss those verses or discuss what we've done so far, you can do that at this point. Otherwise, the next thing I'm going to do is go to Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and Ephesians chapter 4 and read a list of these gifts to, so we can discuss them, or so you can discuss them. So, again, I'm going to pause for just a second. If you want to turn off the video now and discuss what we've talked about so far, you may do that. Okay, you've had time to do that now, hopefully. If you turned off your video and you are putting on pause, you can just start it back up again. We're going to go to Ephesians chapter 4 first because there's a list of, approx list of approximately 20 gifts and or people who have been given to the body of Mashiach to, to, uh, so that the body can minister to itself, the various parts of the body can minister to itself. We're starting in Ephesians chapter 4 because these are the gifts of leadership, okay, that uh, these are gifted people that are given to the body of Mashiach so that the body can, can, uh, can function appropriately. Okay, I'm sorry, I took so long, but I, I might, the print of this new thing is really tiny. I had to do that in order to get it all into one uh, uh, volume. Okay, so furthermore, for Ephesians chapter 4, starting in verse 11. Furthermore, he gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastor teachers. Their task is to equip Elohim's people for the work of the service that builds the body of Mashiach until we all attain to the unity of of the faith, knowing the Son of Elohim, to a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to Mashiach. We will uh, then no longer be infants tossed around about by the waves and blown along by every wind of teaching at the mercy of people who cleverly devise ways to deceive. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will in every respect grow up into him who is the head Mashiach. <coughs> Under his control, the whole body is being fitted and held together by the support of every joint, which every part working to fulfill its function. This is how the body grows and builds itself up in love. So the point here is, is that Yahweh has supplied, uh, provided, Yeshua, the Son, has supplied four types of individuals, evangelists, preachers, pastor teachers, which is a hyphenated word, and prophets. These are the leaders of the local congregations of the local fellowships. They're the gifted men and or women. Uh, in the case of women who are, could be teaching other women, uh, these gifts are available, or excuse me, are, are handed out by the Holy Spirit, granted to believers, so that the body can minister to itself and be healthy. Okay, now we're going to read Romans chapter 12, and we're going to read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, because these are really important sections of Scripture that teach on these particular gifts, okay? We're going to talk about the list of the gifts when we get there. Starting in verse 1. I exhort you, therefore, brothers, in view of Elohim's mercies, to offer yourselves as a sacrifice, living and set apart for Elohim. This will please him in the logical temple worship for you. In other, way, in other words, do not let yourselves be conformed to the standards of the Olam Hatzet, or the present world. Instead, keep letting yourselves be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you will know what Elohim wants, and will agree that what he wants is good satisfying and able to succeed. That's Romans 1 and 2. Okay? Then we're going to go on down. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's just going to take way too long. I'm going to start with verse 4 now, talking about the list of gifts that are given to us in Romans. For just as there are many parts that compose one body, but the parts don't all have the same functions, so there are many of us, and in union with Mashiach, we comprise one body with each of us belonging to the others. But we have gifts that differ, and which are meant to be used according to the grace that has been given us. If your gift is prophecy, use it to the extent of your faith. If it is serving, use it to serve. If you are a teacher, use, it, use your gift in teaching. If you are a counselor, use your gift to comfort and exhort. If you are someone who gives, do it simply and generously. If you are a person of leadership, Lead with diligence and zeal. 
if you are one who does acts of mercy, do them cheerfully. So we see a list of six gifts here. Underline serving, prophecy, counseling, giving, leadership, and mercy. That's a list of gifts in Romans. And we'll go over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And we'll see another list, list of gifts. In all, there are approximately 20, depending on how you divide them. Four of them are actually gifted people given to the body, and then, then the other uh, um, 16 uh, come from Romans and 1 Corinthians 12. So kind of helps to remember that both Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12 is where this list of gifts is given. In 1 Corinthians 12, I'm just going to read the list, starting in verse 8. To the one through Ruach, or the Spirit, is given a word of wisdom, to another a word of knowledge, in accordance with the same Ruach, or Spirit, to another faith, to another gifts of healing, to another working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to another yet the ability to interpret tongues. So we had six in the previous list, and we've got um, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten here, if I counted correctly. So that's a total of sixteen in these two books, plus the four that are mentioned in Ephesians, and that's either redundant or it's actually telling us that there are gifted persons who, who uh, are set aside to build up the body of Christ for teaching, to equip the body of Christ for the work of the service. One other thing, it tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, when the body meets together, uh, this is the way the body is supposed to function as these gifts are ministered to one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting in verse 14 now. For, the, for indeed the body is not one part, but many. If the foot says, I'm not a hand, so I'm not part of the body, that doesn't make it stop being a part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not an eye, so I'm not a part of the body, that doesn't make it stop being a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, how could it hear? If it were all hearing, how could it smell? But it is Elohim arranged, who arranged each of the parts in the body exactly as he wanted them. Now, if they were all just one part, where would the body be? And then we go on to the verse 15. Starting in verse 27. Now you together constitute the body of Mashiach, and individually you are parts of it. And Elohim has placed in the Messianic community first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then those who work miracles, and those with gifts of healing, those with ability to help, those with skills in administration, and those who speak in various tongues. So it gives a list of another list that are just, it's just telling the list of importance of these gifts to the body of Mashiach. And then we're told in chapter 14, this is the one that talks about how the body is supposed to function when it meets together. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and we're going to begin in verse 26. What is our conclusion, brothers? Whenever you come together, let everyone be ready with a psalm or a teaching or a revelation, or ready to use his gift of tongues or give an interpretation, but let, everyone be, let everything be done for edification. If the gift of tongues is exercised, let it be two or at the most three, and each in turn, and let someone interpret. And if there is no one present who can interpret, let the people who speak in tongues keep silent when the congregation meets. They can speak to themselves and to Elohim. Let two or three prophets speak while the others weigh what is said. If something is revealed to a prophet who is sitting down, let the first one be silent, for you can all prophesy one by one with the result that all will learn something and all will be encouraged. Also, the prophet's spirits are under the prophet's control. So the important thing is, is that your prophets are your teachers. You're going to have a group of those people within the body. And if, if one is speaking and another one is seated, and if the one happens to be standing, not necessarily stand while you're teaching, but if he is, and one seated has a revelation or something that he needs to share with the rest of the body, he's a recognized leader within the body, then, he, then the one who's speaking is supposed to let the other person stand and speak or share what Yahweh has placed upon his mind. And that way, all of those with the gift of leadership within the body at the time of teaching and learning will be administering their gifts. 
And of course, at the other times, whenever you have fellowship and around a, a meal, fellowship doing a variety of things, then the other members of the body use their gifts to administer to them gifts, those gifts to the body of Mashiach. So, I trust that this has been a, a, a brief but very, very insightful study for those of you who are listening. If there are any questions, I invite you to write me at my, my email or on my Facebook, uh, message me on my Facebook. I'm under the name David L. Perky on Facebook, and my email is dsperky at midrivers.com. And this information will be at the end of this video uh, after it's produced. So if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, let's close this uh, session uh, with a word of prayer, okay? Yahweh El Yisrael, we praise you and worship you and adore you as our Creator, as our Yah, as, uh, as our Elohim, as the one who uh, sustains all things in heaven and earth and the sea and under the sea and throughout the universe. We just ask now that as we, as we consider these things that uh, we've looked at in your word, that you would administer our, to our hearts and our minds, that you tell us, help us understand what our, our particular gifts are that your, your uh, Ruach has imposed upon each of us, and that we would develop those gifts and be administering those gifts to the rest of the body, that your body, that you might be glorified, that your body might grow, and that you would add people daily, those to the body, those who are being saved. And it's the name of Yeshua Mashiach we pray these things. And all Yahweh's people said, Amen. Thank you.